I think we'll start. Um, and that means I'm going to give you out some sheets, some song sheets. One for myself. Um, the talk Thank you. tonight has got sort of like two titles. It's sort of um, because it was originally laid off as a. If I pass these round, or sorry, if you pass these round, there should be enough people around the back. As a response to Richard Dawkins. Yeah. Okay. But that was, that was just sort of gave the initial frame to it. Um, it initially started off with listening to a tape, and listening to, sorry, a program, Melvin Bright on the Multiverse, which happened in February of last year. And I was really quite surprised by this because they were talking about something I'd never heard of. And I've always tried to keep my finger on the pulse a little bit with science. I'm not a scientific person in any sense, but I do try and keep up a little bit to try and understand. And this was something I'd never heard of. Um, and it came to me as quite a shock. And I researched it a little bit, but didn't go into it too deeply. Um, and then it sort of came up again. We were talking about Tony B. We were talking in the in the uh, in the pub one one night, and he was said to me about the anthropic principle, which is what a, the thing that pricked my ears up to. Now Bob has very kindly managed to get the the original recording. If you get a chance, it's on Listen Again, archive for in our time, and it's called the Multiverse, and we're going to play about five minutes of it because they introduced this idea which I had not come across. But before we go on to that, I want to start with a little piece which, which really t tickled me, and we're going to, uh, this is going to be the, the sort of the framing device for the whole talk. Um, the two books I've been researching are The Anthropic Principle and The Goldilocks Enigma. And this, this example comes from The Goldilocks Enigma. And why it's interesting is because it talks about this whole area that we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about cosmology, which is from the Big Bang. It's the actual universe that we, that we live in. And he quotes this funny story about he, uh, in the book he actually references, it's, it's Bertrand Russell listening to William James. And William James was talking about the cosmos and the, qu the big questions as to how big the universe is, and what's out there, which is what we're going to be talking about tonight. And Bertrand Russell says that in the middle of the talk, this lady says, well, I know what it is. It's quite obvious. It's something which I've always known. And it's that the Earth rests on a giant elephant, you see. Now, this was meant to be a, sci a scientific meeting. And he said, well, because he was a good speaker, not like me, he took, he took this point seriously and argued around it and then sort of said, well, what's the elephant standing on? And she said, oh, well, that's, that's easy. It's standing on a giant turtle, which is a very old Polynesian concept, you know. So he gave it a bit of space and then he said, well... I can understand your point about that, but then you've still got the problem of what the turtle is resting on. And she came out with a wonderful crack, and she said, well, it's obvious, it's turtles all the way down. <laughs> <laughs> and then it is. <laughs> now, Paul Dayton says, well, it's a very good illustration about cosmology, and we'll come back to it again later in, in, in the thing, but he says that it actually, it's still a representation of the way we be sort of forced to think, and he said that the, the only other exception he'd make is that some people would actually say, well, yeah, but actually there's a really big turtle at the bottom, <laughs> and, that, and I'm going to keep that literally as a reference for the way we can actually, I'm going to come back to it, because I think it's a good way of framing the whole talk. So I'm going to leave it here as the sort of touchstone 
of the ideas that we're discussing. Okay? So, fine glasses. Right. <clears throat> now, what ultimately got me to talk about literally the, the cosmological aspect of it, and the thing I'd picked up from the In Our Time story was that someone asked me to try and formulate some sort of a response to Richard Dawkins. And particularly the fact that he was getting a lot of publicity about the fact that God, God is a delusion. He's actually, um, that he actually said that people are deluded if they actually believe in God. And that this distorts our society. And he got a lot of publicity about this. He did a, a tour of it. Several people went to see him um, that I know and said that he was actually a brilliant speaker. And I'd not come across the 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 ideas. I, I'd read his Selfish Gene a long time ago and The Blind Watchmaker when that came out. But I'd largely forgotten what it was all about. But this is the theme which has been running throughout his work. So we we managed it. Bob lent me the um, the CDs of the, of the book. And I must admit, I really enjoyed the book, um, particularly the first two chapters, which, in which he actually goes to town on the concept of God. Now, what I found fascinating is that he actually doesn't believe in the God that I don't believe in. <laughs> um, what you've got with most um, analysts of people of, of religious thought, is that religious thought evolves. And what you have in the Old Testament is what is a standard class tribal god. Uh, Dawkins describes him as, I think he uses the word as um, unpleasant, racist, sexist, um, so sadomasochistic, bully. He uses all these words for him. And there is reference for that right throughout, certainly the Old Testament. You find these references. I was very lucky in that when I was a teacher, we used to have assembly, and every morning we would have a reading from the Bible. And they only asked me to speak twice, <laughs> so I was usually at the back, thumbing through the Bible. So I mean, you had to look interested in that sense. Often the the, the, the little homilies were, were very interesting, and the Bible readings were fascinating. But if you look through the Bible, you realise that most of us think we know the Bible because of what we've heard. There's big chunks that you haven't read, and there's big chunks, uh, you realise why you haven't read There's an awful lot of death and destruction and begatting going on inside that book. It is quite brutal. So that if you read it, if you came across it as a stranger and read it, it would, it would, be, it would have a strange effect on you. It's because we know it, and it's been, in many senses, shuffled for us, and been dealt to us, that we don't realise that essentially it is a tribal god that we're talking about. It was extremely racist and exclusive. And it was only when I started to read outside of the area that you... Well, for instance, the, the way the Egyptians thought of the Ibiru, as they called them, the Hebrews, and what they did to other tribes around the area, that you get a mixed viewpoint. Then you can come back to it. But throughout the Bible, he actually evolves, and he evolves big time when it comes to the New Testament. When Christ says he comes to change the law, he means it, you know. The Ten Commandments are swept away for two commandments, love God and love your neighbour as yourself. And that is a distinct evolutionary step. If you read Leviticus, which are the laws of the tribe of Israel, you'll find in some, in some very brutal and some very limiting laws that you wouldn't tolerate now as a, as a normal Western person. And what Dawkins is going for is he's going for that. And as far as I can see, most of the time I agree with him. There's no doubt about that. He's got some very good points, and he points to the fact that it does distort society. I don't think it distorts society in Britain as much as it does in America, and I do think he's writing pointedly for America, where, you know, Bob and I have discussed this, they have a lot of problems with creationism over there. Mm. All fundamental religions, if you take the, the written text as law, creates tremendous problems. If we took the Bible as law, the way it's written in Leviticus, we would have horrendous problems. And you can use it in that sense to, you know, to really stir up trouble. Right, so I'm starting with, with talking from that point of view. 